Six million people squeezed onto an island smaller than New York City and almost no natural water of their own. So instead of fighting for scraps of land above ground, Singapore made a $10 billion gamble, burying the entire nation's sewage system 55 meters down. Below even subway tunnels, these deep tunnels free up land worth billions and turn yesterday's wastewater into tomorrow's tap water. But what forces pushed Singapore to engineer a solution this extreme? Singapore's population now stands at nearly 6 million, packed onto an island just 734 square kilometers across. That is more than 8,000 people for every square kilometer, one of the highest densities anywhere on Earth. Every square meter has to count, but for decades, a hidden grid of aging sewage plants and pipelines quietly claimed some of the island's most valuable ground. Seven main treatment plants, built between the 1960s and the 1980s, sprawled across more than 200 hectares, land that could have become homes, parks, or commercial centers. These facilities were not tucked away in forgotten corners. They sat near rivers and along the coast close to the heart of the city's daily life. Each plant was designed to take advantage of gravity, sending wastewater downhill toward the sea. But as Singapore's population grew, so did the volume of sewage, pushing these plants to their limits. The city's rapid development left little room for expansion. Meanwhile, the risk of pollution from plants near water sources became harder to ignore. Odors drifted into dense neighborhoods, and the visual impact of sprawling industrial sites clashed with the city's ambitions for livability and green space. Singapore's water challenge only added to the pressure. With no natural aquifers and just a handful of small reservoirs, the island has always depended on imported water from Malaysia. Each drop of treated wastewater lost to the sea was a missed opportunity for self-sufficiency. As demand rose, the old surface system revealed its weaknesses, scattered and land-hungry, and increasingly outmatched by the pace of urban growth. The question was no longer whether the system could be patched yet again. The question was how the city could reclaim land and resources for the future. The answer would require a complete rethinking of what sewage infrastructure could be and where it should go. Beneath the city's crowded skyline, Singapore's answer to the sewage crisis takes the form of two vast tunnels, each six meters wide, stretching a combined 48 kilometers across the island. These tunnels do not just disappear under the surface, they plunge 55 meters down, deeper than the deepest subway lines and farther than most building foundations. That is the height of a 15-story tower running horizontally beneath the island's busiest neighborhoods and business districts. This system is not an add-on to the old network. It is a complete replacement engineered from the start for a city that is still growing. At full capacity, the deep tunnel sewerage system is built to serve up to 8 million people, well beyond Singapore's current population. That means every home, office, and factory can connect with room for decades of future growth. The logic is brutally simple and elegant. Use gravity to do the heavy lifting. Wastewater from every corner of the island drops into vertical shafts, falling the equivalent of 18 stories before joining the main tunnels. Once there, the tunnels slope gently, letting sewage flow naturally to two massive treatment plants, Changi in the east and Tuas in the west. This gravity-fed design cuts the need for energy-hungry pumps scattered across the city, concentrating movement underground toward just two destinations. The scale of the investment matches the ambition. Phase 1, covering the eastern half of Singapore, came in at $3.4 billion. Phase 2, completing the loop in the west, added over $7 billion more. The result is a $10 billion system constructed to last more than a century and that now operates almost invisibly beneath the city's surface. Every detail, from the tunnel's reinforced linings to their constant slope, reflects a planner's obsession with durability, efficiency, and future-proofing. 
In a city where every square meter matters, the new blueprint for sewage management is hidden deep below, engineered for both today's needs and tomorrow's possibilities. Construction crews broke ground on the first stretch of Singapore's deep tunnel system in 2001, charting a 24-kilometer path from Kranji in the west to Changi at the island's eastern tip. The alignment cut beneath bustling neighborhoods, business parks, and even a cluster of old surface treatment plants that had long been a fixture in the east. By the time the system went live in 2008, three of these surface plants, including the one at Badok, had been permanently shuttered. For residents living near the former Badok plant, the change was immediate. Years of enduring the faint tang of sewage in the air gave way to clean breezes. The constant hum of machinery faded replaced by the sounds of daily life. Land once fenced off for industrial use began to open up, with plans for new parks and housing taking shape. One resident who had grown up watching the plant's smokestack from her kitchen window described the relief of finally seeing open sky and the prospect of new community spaces. The Changi Water Reclamation Plant, designed as the eastern anchor of the new system, became a showcase for what was possible when treatment was centralized and hidden from view. Unlike the sprawling surface facilities it replaced, Changi was compact and efficient, built to handle the full weight of the East's wastewater quietly, out of sight, and with enough capacity to support future growth. Engineers who worked on the project recall the challenge of tunneling beneath a dense city without disrupting daily life but the payoff was unmistakable. More than 100 hectares, about 109 hectares in total, were freed up for new uses, an area larger than many of Singapore's signature parks. What began as an audacious experiment proved itself in practice. With the eastern half of the island now served by a single underground artery, the city had a working model for reclaiming precious land and, resh and reshaping its future. The next step would be even bigger, extending the system west beneath the city's busiest districts and most complex infrastructure. When the Western Tunnel broke through to Tuas, Singapore's underground network finally linked the entire island. This last phase demanded a level of precision and coordination unmatched in the project's history. 19 tunnel boring machines carved their way beneath the city, steering under mass rapid transit lines set 40 meters down and clear of building foundations that reached even deeper. The ground shifted from soft marine clay to hard granite, forcing engineers to constantly adjust tactics to keep progress steady. For the crews, every meter was a test. One lead engineer recalled that they were tunneling right under the busiest parts of Singapore, and every day the city moved above them without knowing the work was there. The project stretched over a decade, with teams monitoring vibrations, groundwater pressure, and the smallest signs of settlement to avoid disrupting life overhead. The payoff came in 2021 and 2022 when the Western system went live. Four major surface plants, Ulu Pandan, Jurong, Angmo Kyo, and Changi Extension were decommissioned. About 101 hectares of urban land, once locked away for sewage treatment, were handed back to planners. A senior urban planner summed up the impact, saying land in those locations is worth billions. Estimates put the value of this tranche between five and $10 billion, a windfall in a city where every hectare is fought over. The new Tuas Water Reclamation Plant, engineered to last a century, became the western anchor for the system. With both Changi and Tuas operating, Singapore could now treat and reclaim enough water to meet 40% of its demand through knee water, with a clear path to 55% by 2060. The entire island's sewage now flows silently through deep tunnels, freeing up land, boosting water security, and proving that even the most crowded cities can reinvent themselves from the ground down. Today, 200 hectares of prime land are being reborn, while recycled water meets 40% of Singapore's needs. As cities everywhere face land and climate pressures, 
Singapore's underground gamble is now a global blueprint. The future of urban survival may be buried far deeper than we think.